We've got Jennifer. Jennifer, can you hear me all right? Hi, nope. Jennifer, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? All right, I'm Dr. Wong, Michael Wong. Dr. DeVita might be popping in with us. She was, was here, but we're having some computer difficulties. So um, I figured we, we, we'd get started here. So, um, so tell us about your, your dog. I, 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 um, <laughs> what's his or her name? Um, what, what's his name? And uh, where, where, are you, where are you from? So we're uh, in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, so quite far from <laughs> quite far from you, um, but our closest neurologist is in Montreal, which is like twelve hours. So we wow. thought this would be a good opportunity to ask a question. Sure. But um, so our our baby here is Sophia, and okay. she's she's almost five. She'll be five in November, and um, she's a Boston Terrier, of course. And so she started having seizures um, a couple of weeks, maybe two weeks before her first birthday. And it started as just clusters, like just one night out of the blue, she just clustered like 15 times, took her like on the way to the vet. We didn't know what was happening and it kind of all went downhill from there. But um, so we took her to the, uh, we have a veterinary college in PEI in a neighboring province. And uh, she had a CAT scan and, um, a spinal tap with no res nothing um, to be noted, and but not the MRI. So my question is, um, uh, none of the vets can help us, but uh, w with the reason why she has it, or you know, trying to, uh, we have it kind of managed. But I I could never understand uh, the cyclical nature of her seizures. So her seizures started every sixty days. They were sixty days apart. Then they went to thirty days apart. Then they went to two weeks apart, and now they've been at one week uh, apart for two years. It's like that's very strange to me. It's almost like shouldn't that be a hint as to you know, as to what could possibly be causing them? Sure. And and is she on any medications? Oh for yeah. The so, yep, she's on phenobarbital, um, the g generic Keppra. I can't say it starts with an L. Um, she's on potassium bromide. She's on um, gabapentin. She takes chlorazepate as a rescue uh, drug. And um, she's on a lot of CBD. So um, yeah, uh, that's legal here. So uh, we just go to the, um, the liquor store and uh, she takes an oil. There's, there's a very low THC, um, a, a very low amount of THC, of course. But she takes about probably 25 milligrams of CBD twice a day. Okay. Yeah. And she's on a keto only diet. And, and what sort of uh, doses of the phenobarbital, of the Keppra, the bromide, gabapentin? Yeah. So the uh, potassium bromide, she takes two meals once um, at night with her food. Um, she takes 250 Keppra in the morning uh, three times a day. And we don't have the extent the extended release in Canada, so that's the regular that she takes. Okay. And she takes sixty um, of phenobarbital twice a day. And the chlorazepate, like I said, is just a rescue drug, but that's fifteen okay. milligrams. And am I missing something? Uh, chlorazepate. No, I think that's it. She and she obviously takes lots of. Um, we take. Um, uh, Dr. Merkel is the liver support because she, yeah, to help her liver. But um, like a year ago, I think they said, it was just over a year ago, they said her liver was just shot and like, you know, we had to think about euthanasia. And then that's when we upped her CBD and um, her CB, her liver's perfectly fine now. Okay. So we're happy with that. It's just, you know, and it's been once a week for two years. So it's predictable, but it's just like, it's just frustrating. Like we've tried every kind of alternative therapy. Like she does Reiki, she does sound therapy. She does like, we have a grounding mat for her. We do the eye compressions and ice on her back. Like anyway, she has lots of things, but it's just the cyclical nature of it. To me, I would think that that's a hint 
as to like, is it an, an inflammatory issue? Like what, it, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, so the, the likelihood is, is that she's an idiopathic epileptic. Mm -hmm. um, do dogs with epilepsy, uh, there are a couple things. One, just the seizures usually start between one and five years of age. And it sounds yep. like she started just before one year of age. Mm -hmm. um, they're usually whole body seizures, what we call generalized clonic tonic seizures. Um, yep. Many times dogs can cluster, uh, meaning that they have multiple seizures in, in one day or one seizure right after the other. Um, they usually have a normal exam, which obviously I, I can't tell right now, but they're usually normal between seizures. <laughs> yep, she seems pretty normal, yep. And then there are a couple other things that I usually see in dogs that have idiopathic epilepsy. I'm gonna let Dr. DeVita in here real quick. Um, okay. There are usually a couple other things that we see in dogs with idiopathic epilepsy. Many times they have their seizures when they're kind of quiet. So many owners report, you know, it happens when the dog's sleeping or, you know, at four o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, um, as opposed to when they're being active and being stimulated. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that we often see with dogs with idiopathic epilepsy is that there is a, a regular interval to it. And without treatment, in general, the seizures become more frequent and or more severe. Unfortunately, as, as, as Sophia is showing us, sometimes even with treatment, the, fr the frequency can increase. Um, about how much does she weigh? Um, she weighs... 22 pounds, I think now. Yeah. Um, she was getting quite chunky because of the phenobar, but the keto diet, like, man, trimmed her down. Like, really, the keto diet is really effective in keeping her satiated. Because um, I found the phenobar, she was just starving all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we, we found that the, the keto diet was a great addition. It didn't reduce her seizures, but it, it uh, definitely helped her quality of life. And the same as the CBD, it didn't reduce the seizures, but it did help make them shorter and the recovery is better. She, her recovery used to be like two hours of wandering and head pressing, and now it's minutes. Has your veterinarian done any drug levels on, on the phenobarbital? So at, at, at 10 kilograms, um, if so, so Dr. DeVita, um, Mm -hmm. Sophia is a five-year-old female Boston Terrier. Uh, she's had seizures since starting just before a year of age. She typically clusters. Um, the frequency was originally every two months, then every one month, then every two weeks. And for the last two years, we've had a seizure just about every week. Um, we've had a, a CT and a spinal tap, which were both normal. We're currently on 60 milligrams of phenobarbital twice a day. Uh, Levoteracetam, 250 milligrams, three times a day. Um, bromide, you, you said two mLs. I, I, I assume that's 250 mg per mL. That's kind of what it comes in down here. So, Bromide? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. We just put two milliliters in the syringe, so I'm not quite sure what the concentration is. It's, um, it's just, uh, it's a liquid. We use the liquid here. They just uh, compound it. Okay. But she's at the top of, I, I think, from what I remember, she's at the top of that. So it must be whatever her uh, maximum dose is. And the phenobarb, I'm just going to put her down. <laughs> no, she's fine. I mean, it, she's not bothering me at all. So I, I... Um, yeah, so the, um, the phenobarb, um, they, we just had her level checked okay. probably a month ago. And they said we actually have a little bit of room if we wanted to increase that a bit. But since we're still at a, a weekend, like her seizures aren't increasing and they're not getting worse, then I'm um, just like, you know, where she had liver problems before, like, let's just keep it there. And at least then if, if the seizure activity increases or the, the duration of the seizure increases, then we have a little wiggle room, so. Yeah, so, so Dr. DeVita, her, her main question was, you know, do, does the regular intervals or the almost predictable nature um, lean us towards one differential over the other. And I, I basically said, you know, everything else is sort of pointing towards idiopathic epilepsy. And with idiopathic epilepsy, um, we, we often do see a, a pattern or a, a cyclical nature to it. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with regards to, to medications, um, 
again, it's it's tough for me to recommend from here. Um, based off of uh, her, her weight, um, Kepra or Levoteracetam has a very broad range. Um, so looking at what you've told me her body weight is and um, the, the dose that you're on, there might be some room for you to consider increasing that. You know, I'd, I'd talk with your veterinarian about it, but um, I, in general, like to max out one drug before adding another. Right. Or, or in Sophia's case, I, I'd like to max out that fourth drug before considering a fifth one. Um, Keppra is a very, very safe drug. Um, it's got a large dose uh, range. It's not metabolized by the liver. So mm -hmm. that, that concern of, of liver disease, um, you know, we shouldn't have to worry that much about that. Um, not that it's high on my, on my worry list, but we just didn't talk about what, what sort of blood tests were done um, <laughs> originally to try and diagnose her. Oh, originally, so we took her to the veterinary college and she was there for like four days. So she had the whole gamut. The, the only thing, and I would have to dig that stuff up, but the only thing we didn't do was the MRI. Sure. Um, and because they only have a human uh, hospital where they have to rent the MRI. So it's like $3,000, I think. And at the time, basically I said to them, you know, is the MRI gonna show us something that we can fix? If the MRI is going to give us a reason for her seizures, like a birth defect or something, like I can't fix, I'd rather put $3,000 into her care sure. um, than have an answer as to why she has it, right? But if it's something like, you know, I know that they said they can also test for a liver shunt or whatever, and she, she didn't have any of those kind of issues. And it was mainly just the spinal tap we were worried about, and then tumors, obviously, with the CAT scan. So she was clear on all that. The only blood work that came back odd when they first did it was that her um, liver enzymes were up at the time. And uh, there was something in her urine uh, that showed, I forget what it was, but they said that it can be because she had seizures. Our vet didn't really know. Basically, they couldn't control it anymore. She was having seizures every few minutes and she was there for a couple days. So she probably had a hundred seizures before in that first episode before we took her. And um, so, yeah, I'm not quite sure what was elevated. There was something odd elevated and, um, but that came down. Uh, they said it was just a result of the seizures, but we just had a blood panel done and they said, everything looks good. The only thing that's slightly elevated will be her liver, but it's not even a concern, especially for a dog on phenobarb. So. Right. And she was also, I should mention, she was also on zanisamide, but we um, took her off that. She was on that for almost a year. It didn't reduce any seizures. It didn't reduce the severity or anything like that. And it was quite expensive I mean, with all the other stuff. So we just took her off that and she didn't even have an, any extra seizures. So that obviously wasn't working. Yeah, I guess what I was getting at is I just wanted to make sure that, you know, Usually if we've done a spinal tap and a CAT scan, it means that we've also done blood work. Um, so we like to look outside of the brain just because she started having seizures bef before a year of age, mm -hmm. something like a liver shunt needs to be on our worry list. Um, I guess the fact that, you know, we're, we're five now and um, it does seem to be a, a regular pattern to it. I guess it's less likely that it's a liver shunt, but it's something simple enough to rule out um, with a, a bile acids test. So, that's probably not unreasonable. Um, what was one of the, the things he had said? Um, so it, it's super common and super, super reasonable. Many owners have that sort of approach. Well, gosh, you know, I would do tests if I knew it was going to give me something that I could fix. And obviously mm. we, we don't know what it is and that's why we're recommending those tests. Um, so I, 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 I wish that I could tell owners, you know, well, you, even without the test, I know what it's going to be. Let me save you the $3,000. Um, just the reality is we don't know what the answer is going to be until we do the tests. And every single day, you know, there's a dog that I'm sure it's going to have this because that's what the textbooks say. But then we do the test and it's that. So, um, but the likelihood of Sophia having something terrible like, you know, a brain tumor or meningitis. Um, and that she's had it for four years and is still normal yeah. between the, each episode. 
I think it's really unlikely at this point. So um, I, I don't think you need to go rushing out for an MRI. Um, I think the fact that you've done a, a CAT scan and we've got four years of history behind us, I think the likelihood of the MRI at this point giving us a lot more information isn't, isn't super high. So. Yeah, and we've removed all the triggers. We have no perfumes, no candles, no scents, no anything. Like we've we've done a lot of research and removed all the triggers and it's still every seven days. So it's like, it's so crazy to me. Like I, at first I thought, okay, is it inflammation or something that builds up? Do you know what I mean? And it just builds up to that point every week or I just don't understand how the seizure knows that it's Tuesday. I don't get it, but. I mean, yeah. if, it, if it's a sign of idiopathic epilepsy, then I guess it is what it is, so. Yeah, I, I again, I don't think that there's any inflammation or anything like that. So. Yeah. Dr. Davida, do you have anything to add? Um, I, I don't think I do. I kind of missed the first half of the conversation. We had some technical difficulties over here, but, um, you know, just agreeing that some dogs do have that cyclical nature and are super predictable. Um, I had one patient uh, last year who ha did have a trigger and it was a uh, plastic bags rustling. So oh, the owners have no plastic bags in the house. So it sounds like you're doing everything you can to try and um, improve her, her quality of life and keep the seizures as minimal as possible. Um, but like Dr. Wong said, unfortunately, some of our even idiopathic epileptic dogs can just be really difficult to get the seizures under, under better control. Um, but it sounds like you're doing everything right so far. Yeah, so the only other thing is I could make the trip to Montreal. I mean, it's 12 hours, um, but um, for an exam, like, do you think that it, it would that be something worthwhile if I actually had a, a, a neurologist examine her? Or um, do you think we should just keep pursuing, like, keep proceeding as we are? Yeah, I mean, I think. Sorry, go ahead. I think there's always a value in meeting with someone that the only thing that they treat is dogs with neurological conditions, you know, so there's, there's, there's only so much I can do, um, you know, through, through the, the, the computer, um, but someone that only treats neurological conditions that has the ability to look at her, you know, if, if all that they say is, yep, you're doing everything right, um, you know, I, I think that's good information. And, you know, who knows, yeah. they might be able to examine her and say, gosh, this symptom suggests this, you know, I do recommend the MRI or I recommend, you know, test A, B, C, or D, or I recommend trying this medication. Um, I, I think there's the, the, the risk benefit ratios, you know, certainly in your, in your favor and that I don't think there's any sort of downside other than the, the 12 hour trip. Yeah, that's true. And she has her own MRI or they have it at the college there. So um, it's less than half the price, I think. So it might be worth the trip. So I think we'll have to bite the bullet. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, thank, thank you, you so. very much. You got it. If you've got any further questions, feel free to, to email them. Um, just that, that Q and A at scbneurology.com. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for your time. Nice meeting you and Sophia. Yep, bye. Bye.